Let's go ahead and move on. This is another important story. Usually it's the fun block. We wanted to, you know, we want to maintain some of our focus on global affairs. So Iraq is currently undergoing a continuing, really slow rolling dem domestic crisis. Some of you may remember the name Muqtada al-Sadr. Uh, everybody in the US knew his name in like 2006, but he's still there. Uh, very much a prominent Shiite cleric, uh, Shiite cleric in the Iraqi government, has his own political party. They've been unable to form a major government there now for some time. And protest Protests have erupted outside of parliament in the presidential palace now for months, but really culminated in the last week with a total curfew being imposed on the green zone and in Baghdad. Now we have some crazy footage. We're only gonna show you guys a little bit of it, but just to give you an idea of how nuts things were. Last <laughs> So that was inside the green zone. It was fighting between pro-Iran forces, the Sadrists. There's a coalitional fight. The Dutch embassy actually had to evacuate to the German embassy. There were false reports last night that the U.S. embassy itself was uh, being evacuated. But there's still a lot of questions about this. I mean, you know, it's not as stark as Afghanistan. Iraq was not a complete, like, you know, throwback to the Middle Ages in terms of, it was a real, like, economy and uh, society that it existed as a polity for a little bit longer, and they had a more of a developed society. The issue, though, is that basically since the U.S., you know, we came in, uh, we left in 2011, everything collapsed and went terrible, ISIS comes, takes the city of Mosul, our operations from that point forward were all military, and we're just supporting the Iraqi security forces to drive out ISIS. But on the political level, a lot of the machinations that we did in the surge and more in order to try and balance different elements of the government, which is ultimately what erupted into outright sectarian genocide uh, before all of that, is still and has been bubbling to the surface crystal, yeah. which is really why this is happening. So let's put this up there. Um, you know, the Iraqi protests really turned deadly, in turn, including, you know, in the green zone, the palace, the parliament, and more after Sadr says that he is le quitting politics. Now, he's done this before. Uh, this has always been kind of a, a threat. He is claiming this is his final retirement. The uh, news broke this morning, Crystal, that he says he's called off and told his uh, people to stand down. But this is not the final end kind of of this saga. And it just shows you, like, these countries... You know, you may not read about them anymore, but as we all found out in Afghanistan and more, like things can flare up very, very hot, and then all this, uh, all these questions about our role comes into into question. I mean, I believe our embassy in Iraq is one of the single most embassies ever built. So if we have to abandon that one in the green zone, it will be a symbol of. Something. I, I really don't even want to describe <laughs> Yeah, well, we've got yeah. a lot of those symbols yeah, yeah. littered around the right. Middle East. I would say, I mean, you know, how is Syria doing? How's Libya doing? How's Afghanistan doing as we continue to deny mm -hmm. their government their own money? And now how is Iraq doing? As you point out, so Sadr's coalition um, was the winner of the elections last that they secured the largest number of seats, but not enough to form a government. Mm -hmm. So the uh, they've been without a government for months and months now. And this all kind of comes to a head. Um, he's she a cleric, cleric. He kind of is like against U.S. influence, but also against Iranian influence. His major rivals are these Ira Iranian-backed militias. That's where a lot of the flashpoints and the tension and the fighting and violence is now. So he says in this very sort of dramatic flourish, like, you're free of me. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving. And his followers, um, the analysis that I uh, was listening to said, basically see this as uh, a green light yes. to then sort of like, you know, go riot and, and storm and all this stuff. And that's when you have this violence with 20 plus protesters dead, dozens more injured. And effectively, the idea is this was a political ploy to say basically like, look, when I'm not here keeping a lid on things, see what happens. Um, so sort of making good on this on this type of a threat. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, listen, the bottom line from our perspective is just it turns out uh, freedom and democracy did not reign. And, um, you know, we continue to live with and Iraqis continue to live with the fallout and the chaos that we um, that we created in their country and have, you know, largely just sort of 
left and turn the other cheek and only pay attention when something dramatic and shocking like this occurs. Yeah, so we hope uh, things, you know, people will listen, but it's possible this could flare up into even more of a, uh, even more of like a conflagration over the weekend. We're gonna see how the coalitions and all those other people on the ground. Yeah, well, I'm sure they have the same economic stress that is going on around the globe. High prices, high food prices, you know, and uh, a lot of strain there, and we know, as we've tracked throughout history, I mean, this was a major contributor to the Arab Spring as well and led to a lot of governments being toppled and overturned. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Yeah. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.